Welcome to our channel Students Homeopathy and let's learn together. Kant's philosophy is one of the important manuscripts of homeopathy. Understanding Kant's philosophy increases one's depth and acumen in homeopathy. In this video, we will discuss lecture 6 from Kant's philosophy. In this chapter, Dr. Kant has discussed the unprejudiced observer. Kent starts this lecture by citing the aphorism number 6 of organ of medicine that is the unprejudiced observer well aware of the futility of transcendental speculations which can receive no confirmation from experience be his powers of penetration ever so great takes note of nothing in every individual disease except the changes in the health of the body and of the mind which can be perceived externally by means of the senses that is to say he notices only the deviations from the former healthy state of the now diseased individual which are felt by the patient himself, remarked by those around him and observed by the physician. All these perceptible signs represent the disease in its whole extent, that is, together they form the true and only conceivable portrait of the disease. According to the aphorism, the symptoms represent the nature of sickness or disease or state of disorder. What the physician has to do is to correct this disordered state that is the sickness. In other words, we can say he has to remove the perceptible signs and symptoms which form the true and only conceivable portrait of the disease. Thus, the physician should focus on and carefully record the symptoms of the patient rather than his organs. On the other hand, the old school emphasize on organs themselves as the causes of sickness. For example, the idea like stomach makes the man sick or the stomach makes the liver sick etc. But thinking in this way is great foolishness. As long as we think like this, we only lead to a theory. Homeopathy has no theories. It is a thing that is settled from doctrine and principle. Now, question comes, what does it mean by an unprejudiced observer? An unprejudiced observer refers to one who is devoid of prejudice. But by nature, everyone is prejudiced. Thus, it would almost impossible to find a man without prejudice. Man has fixed opinions regarding politics, religion and so also in ideas of medicine. Prejudice does not let one use his reason. Then, what makes us prejudiced? According to Dr. Kent, our imaginations, presumptions, whims, notions, or our thoughts about something or what we learn from men and books makes us prejudiced because they vary. So now, how can we get rid of prejudice? However, it can be got rid of only if we can recognize the law or have authority on which we can rely. The authority could be a standardized book, fixed principle or law or like this. Further, to make this explanation simpler, Kent has given an illustration of a dictionary and a club with many members. The members of the club would have no arguments over the spelling of words if they have a dictionary to which they all agree. Otherwise, everyone would spell differently in their own way. According to Dr. Kent, the medicine of his days, that is the allopathic system of medicine, had no standard authority or book. It differed from one school to another. Likewise, in homeopathy, to get rid of prejudice, we must accept the laws and principle as the authority. A prejudiced man misreads the law and doctrine, and in him, even law and doctrine will deceive. Thus, it is necessary to use our intelligence as using intelligence makes us reasonable. Using senses only makes observations variables because our senses vary. Thus, 
रिलायंस ऑन सेंसेस ओनली लीड्स टू द कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ डिफरेंट नोशंस एंड थियोरीज द अनप्रिजाइज ऑब्जर्वर इज द ट्रू साइंटिस्ट एंड he perceives in each individual affection nothing but the changes of state so now let's discuss some examples of changes of state often being in a state of confusion though his mind operated well before it getting irritable easily though he was usually pleasant becoming sad whereas he was pleasant previously then what does this change of state mean so the change of state means a state of disorder or want of harmony dr fink called it as a disjunctment it does not refer to the diseased tissues rather it is presented by the symptom portrait then ken mentions the method of case taking to collect the changes of state or the symptom portrait the symptom portrait is collected from the patient outsiders patient's relatives here one important thing has been mentioned by ken that the symptoms are collected from only those relatives who are well wishers of the patient because they can only provide the true case as they truly wants his recovery for the sick husband it is better to get the wife's testimony while taking the case importance should be given to those things which the patient would conceal or cannot relate or does not know many patients behave awkwardly do strange and peculiar things in doctor's chamber without their own knowledge which they would not do in their healthy state these behaviors of them are the manifestation of the diseased or disordered state that is the change of state apart from this the physician should also note down the abnormalities he notices like the order and the findings of physical examination like pulmonary crepitations or ronchi cardiac murmurs temperature aloes or pale conjunctiva skin pigmentation cyanosis etc however the changes in tissues or the pathological changes like tumors are of least importance in the selection of the remedy because they do not represent the nature of changes in state they are only the result of the disease only what we perceive in the patient in general for example his functions and sensation worth for selection for remedy next kent has discussed about the cases with pure functional disturbances that is morbid anatomy or pathological changes in tissues have not come yet in this case the signs and symptoms clearly indicate the remedy and the physician prescribes it to him next kent further proceeds to say here that if however the patient does not get the remedy then what will happen definitely the disease or the morbid process will progress and lead to the morbid anatomy and this time the patient will return with the disease ultimates or organic conditions like cavities in lungs albuminuria liver abscess etc now the million dollar question is whether we will prescribe the same medicine which we would prescribe him earlier when he had no tissue changes or whether we will prescribe a newly selected remedy on the basis of newly developed morbid anatomy it is a very important point that will be helpful in our in our every day clinical practice which kent has explained next so according to kent we should prescribe the same remedy to the patient who returned with tissue changes which we would prescribe him then when he came with purely functional problems thus a man being in a state of disease ultimates who is going to die will be prescribed the same medicine which he needed from his babyhood we can infer from this discussion that during the whole of the life an individual will need one and only constitutional remedy that covers the patient as a whole 
in every chronic case he would suffer from birth till death however the physicians should be thoroughly acquainted with tissue changes that is the morbid anatomy from the post mortem examination and the examination of organs but not as a guide for for prescription but instead for the purpose of diagnosis and prognosis so now let's discuss what is the necessity to study morbid anatomy number 1 diagnosis it helps the physician to find out the changes in the organs and the disease progression next prognosis it helps to know whether the patient is curable or incurable next to provide information to the boards of health and last in deciding the mode of treatment it helps to choose whether the palliative treatment should be given or the curative now one important thing to be noted here is that though signs and symptoms represent the change of state some signs represent the tissue changes and they should not be considered valuable in selecting the similimum for example signs that represent pus formation are not an important point in the selection of the remedy here kent again reminded us about the order of cure which he has already discussed earlier cure is only possible when the establishment of order starts from the innermost in other way cure should be from cause to effect first the innermost is ordered which flow to the outermost and thereby making the function of the body ordered next he discussed about incurable or palliative cases in incurable cases that is in palliative ones the effects of the internal disharmony are removed temporarily or palliated but the patient himself is not cured as the innermost is not ordered every time the old changes will return and grow stronger as it is the nature of chronic diseases to progress then kent has discussed about the irreversible gross pathological changes that developed either due to some external injury or progression of the internal dynamic disease according to him such ridges of the disease can be removed if necessary but only after the patient is cured or turned into order for example amputation can be done of clumsy and useless foot developed after a severe injury of bones of foot but only after the patient is cured a honeycomb knee that is multiple cavities produced in it due to disease progression with cold limbs with flabby muscles can be replaced with an artificial leg but only after the patient is cured here one point is not over the that even after internal economy of man is turned into health such disease ultimates like honeycomb knee or clumsy foot etc are not cured they cannot be cured here the patient is sick thus these tissue changes cannot be cured these cases are incurable so let's summarize this signs and symptoms represent the nature of sickness or disease or state of disorder the physician's aim is to remove the perceptible signs and symptoms which form the true and only conceivable portrait of disease old school physicians emphasize on organs themselves as the cause of sickness which will only lead to a theory prejudice does not let one to use his reason our imaginations presumptions swims notions or our thoughts about something or what we learn from men and books makes us prejudiced because they vary we get rid of prejudice only if we can recognize law or have authority like a standardized book fixed principle or law on which we can rely use of intelligence makes us reasonable while using senses makes our observations variable the unprejudiced observer is the true scientist and he perceives in each individual affection nothing but the changes of state 
Homeopathy has no theories. It is a thing that is settled from doctrine and principle. Change of state does not refer to the disease tissues. Rather, it is presented by the symptom portrait. The symptom portrait is collected from the patient, outsiders and patient's relatives. That is, only those relatives who are well-wisher of the patient. While taking the case, importance should be given to those things which the patient would conceal or cannot relate or does not know. Changes in tissues or the pathological changes like tumors are, are only the results of disease and have little importance in the selection of medicine. During the whole of the life, an individual will need one and only constitutional remedy that covers the patient as a whole. In every chronic case, he would suffer from birth to death. Studying morbid anatomy helps us in diagnosis, prognosis, to provide information to the boards of health and in deciding the mode of treatment. Though signs and symptoms represent the change of state, some signs represent the tissue changes and they should not be considered valuable in selecting the similimum. For example, signs that represent pus formation is not an important point in selection of remedy. Cure is only possible when the establishment of order starts from the innermost. The irreversible gross pathological changes developed either due to some external injury or progression of internal dynamic disease can be removed if necessary but only after the patient is cured or turned into order. So that's all for this video. If you have not yet subscribed to our channel Students Homeopathy, please subscribe it now and also click on the bell icon and select all so that you will not miss any of our informative, educational and interesting videos on homeopathy. And please provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. We will love to answer your queries on this topic. Thank you for watching.